Jensen, it's been an astonishingly busy day for you uh, in Washington, D.C., so I'm grateful for your time. You're sold out of Blackwell. That's what you said. But also that $500 billion forecast, which is Blackwell Rubin, has room to grow. How do those fit together? I said sales are off the charts for Blackwell and NVIDIA GPUs in the cloud are sold out. We got plenty of Blackwells to sell you. We have lots of Blackwells coming. We're making a lot of Blackwells and we have a bunch of Vera Rubens coming. And so business is very, very strong but we've planned our supply chain incredibly well. We have the largest supply chain in the world. Our partners, TSMC, our memory partners, SK Hynix, Micron, Samsung, are doing a fantastic job supporting us. And all of our systems partners, Foxconn and Quanta and Wistron, our packaging partners, everybody's doing a fantastic job supporting us. And we've done a good job planning for a very, very strong year. And we've done a good job planning for Vera Rubin. So, Sales are off the charts. NVIDIA GPUs in the cloud is sold out, but we've got a bunch of black wells to sell. Jensen, what's the road ahead for Vera Rubin? It's one of the most common questions we get for you of how that ramp will go relative to what we saw with the Blackwell generations. Well, the silicon for uh, Vera Rubin, seven different chips are back in our labs. And the bring up is happening across engineering teams. Probably a couple of 20,000 people are working on bringing up Vera Rubin from silicon to systems, to software, to algorithms. People are working around the clock and this bring up is going beautifully. We're on track to deliver Vera Rubin about Q3 timeframe of next year, continuing our once a year cycle. Vera Rubin is already assured a huge success. Everybody's incredibly excited about it. Can't wait to show everybody. And then one last thing is that the rack architecture, the rack scale architecture is completely revolutionary. It includes a scale up switch called the MV Link. MV Link 72, our fifth generation, is the only one of its kind in the world. This rack architecture, which is incredibly complex, started with Grace Blackwell, then Grace Blackwell Ultra, it is transitioned to Grace Blackwell Ultra is incredibly seamless. The same rack, uh, rack scale architecture is going to be used for Vera Rubin. And so the supply chain is all used to it. This complexity right. that we enjoyed with Grace Blackwell transition, we're now incredibly smooth running. And so I think Vera Rubin is going to be just really smooth and, and we're going to ramp it really hard. Jensen, I tried to go through what the CFO Colette Crest said about China. In the quarter gone, it seemed like there was not meaningful H20 sales because the demand wasn't there, even if you were permitted to sell H20. And then in the current period and going forward, NVIDIA seems committed to working with both the United States and China to, to sell what, what uh, Colette called more competitive compute. Where do we stand with that? And, and, and could you just clarify what, what Colette was talking about in the current state of play for China? The most important thing she said is that we've said for some time now, our forecast for China is zero. All of our forecast the guidance that we showed, zero. We should start, that's the most important thing that she said. She also said that effectively China is a very important market to us. It's very important to the United States. It's very important to China. We would love the opportunity to be able to re-engage the Chinese market with excellent products that we deliver and to be able to compete globally. The Chinese market is very large. This year, my guess is probably about $50 billion dollars it's great for the American people that we're able to compete in the Chinese market. It's great for the China market that we're able to provide NVIDIA's technology to them. It's great for the rest of the world as Chinese software companies and Chinese open source models leave China and are used all over the world. And so I think it's fantastic that we're able, it would be fantastic if we're able to participate in the China market. But for now, we should just assume the mark, our NVIDIA's 
uh, forecast for China market is zero. We're going to continue to, to engage the U.S. government, continue to engage the China government to advise them and to encourage them to allow us to go back and compete in the open market. And so until then, we should assume zero. Jensen, during the call, the U.S. Commerce Department issued a statement saying that uh, you are now permitted to export up to 35,000 Blackwell chips each to both Saudis, Humane, and to the UAE through G42. But there are some requirements that the U.S. has of you, um, in particular around controls of uh, preventing tech transfer to China through the Middle East. What can you tell us about your understanding of what the U.S. government's asking of you there? Uh, that that um, uh, that 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 element uh, is has been around for a long time. Uh, is to prevent diversion. Uh, of course, over the years, people have speculated about diversion. Um, we've chased down every single uh, concern, and uh, we've repeatedly uh, tested and sampled uh, data centers around the world and uh, found no uh, diversion. And so this is a this is an area that that will continue to be rigorous on. And uh, there's a, a lot of different ways to uh, comply. And one of them, of course, is to have it be run by American cloud. Another way is just to make sure that uh, we have measures put in place, whether technology or processes, to ensure that no diversion happens. Jensen, the number one question I, I get for you is always about energy. Um, how severe is the energy shortage in the context of AI expansion? And would you talk a bit about power and whether power is a bigger constraint for this build out than the chips themselves? When you're growing at the rate and scale of NVIDIA, remember we're growing some 60% a year, just quarter to gro quarter growth of our company is $10 billion. We grew an entire size of a company just from in one quarter. And so the, the scale and the rate at which we're growing, everything's a challenge, which is the reason why NVIDIA has to be world-class at our supply chain, working with incredible providers and suppliers like TSMC and, and the memory partners and all of our systems partners, but also working downstream to work with uh, energy providers, power generator companies, um, all of the land, power, and shell providers so that we could make sure that as we launch into the marketplace, as we deploy into the marketplace, land, power, and shell will be ready for us. One of our great advantages is that we have such a large network of go-to-market. Every We're in every single cloud. Every single cloud service provider is a customer of ours. We're in every single GPU cloud. And so... We have a large network and not to mention OEMs, not to mention all around the world. Our customer base, our network of partners is so large that we will find nooks and crannies of power in large scale, medium scale, small scale in different parts of the world. And so this is a, a huge advantage of ours. And it stems right. from the fact, Ed, that NVIDIA's architecture literally runs every model. And today, yesterday, we announced a big news with Anthropic. And so now the premier frontier models, OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, Gemini, all the open sources, biological models, physical AI models, everything in the world runs on NVIDIA. And as a result of that, irrespective of which cloud provider you are, it is fantastic that we can deploy in your cloud because the offtake will be incredible. Jensen, we can see where the hyperscalers are getting the money where they have the money to deploy and build. But you, you mentioned Anthropic. With Anthropic or indeed OpenAI, they have tens of billions of dollars of commitments um, around the world. Very simple. Like, How do you know that OpenAI is good for it, that it will be able to find the money? Well, we're thoughtful, along with OpenAI, thoughtful in uh, aligning on and taking into consideration visibility of demand and their financing capabilities. All of that has to be in accordance, has to be aligned, has to be coherent uh, before we start to build out. And so I think the, the, uh, the ambition's large, 
but the execution is disciplined. And that's really, really important to recognize. We're very disciplined with our investment. We're disciplined with our build out. Um, these are very large scale investments. And so the two teams are quite disciplined, very disciplined in thinking through the investment levels. Now, it's also important to take a step back and realize that OpenAI, Anthropic, these are the fastest growing company in the history of humanity. Their offtake, their end market demand is absolutely real and absolutely incredible. And you could see that they're really struggling to keep up with the demand uh, that they have. The engineering teams, we work incredibly hard to make sure that we bring them on more capacity, but also optimizing their stack so that the usage of whatever capacity is as efficient as possible. And meanwhile, there's so many new use cases that they want to put back, put out into the world, and it's currently limited by the capacity they have. And so this is a really important time. You're seeing an exponential growth in the amount of compute demand necessary for AI. You're seeing an exponential growth of adoption and use of AI. And the number of applications that are going to be using these AI is also growing. And so we've got to do our best to support the scaling out of two of the most consequential companies in history. And uh, we're delighted to be part partnered with them.